Benin is one of many African countries facing food security issues. This means a lack of quantity and diversity, not to mention the high costs. For this reason, we turn to indigenous practices in the hope of uncovering sustainable solutions to the food security problem. Our research project focused on the traditional use of entomophagy, that's the eating of insects, as they're an underutilized and potentially valuable source of food. We travelled to Northern Benin to explore a case of entomophagy in order to gain knowledge from traditional practices and to examine the potential for its regional expansion. Welcome to Benin, located on the West African coast and sandwiched in between Nigeria and Togo. While the population is becoming increasingly urbanised, much of the country still remains rural. The economy here is largely based on cultivation for export. However, most agriculture is devoted to subsistence farming. The north has always been poorer than the south, largely due to Benin spanning two very different climatic zones. The south is tropical and more fertile, and also benefits from import-export activities through its ports. In contrast, the landlocked north is arid, oscillating between an extensive dry season and heavy rains, making agriculture unreliable and malnutrition a significant problem. The problem of malnutrition is with acuity in our region, because there was an estimation fait par Valide International sur le problème de la malnutrition, l'impact de la malnutrition sur la population de la zone. Et les résultats de cette étude ont montré que d'abord 10% des enfants, 10% des enfants à domicile souffrent de la malnutrition aiguë globale. Et dans ces 10%, il y a un sur les sur 10 enfants qui souffrent de la malnutrition sévère et qui se trouvent à la maison. Mais ce qui est plus grave, c'est que 50% des enfants, et quand je parle des enfants, c'est surtout des enfants de 0 à 5 ans, 50%, c'est-à-dire plus précisément 49,5% des enfants à domicile souffrent de la malnutrition chronique. Le problème de la malnutrition, ce n'est pas un problème de quantité, ce n'est pas seulement un problème de quantité ni de qualité, c'est un problème multifactoriel. Our study focused on two Wama settlements, the village of Koso and the town of Kotiaku. These are small, close-knit communities tied by strong family bonds and long-standing ancestral practice. Their main economic activity is subsistence farming, with any surplus being sold in local markets. Due to this reliance on agriculture, a poor harvest can have devastating effects for the community. One ancestral tradition passed on is the catching and consuming of insects. 17 species are eaten in total, including varieties of crickets, chafers, water beetles and termites. This is and always has been carried out by the children of the village in their leisure time. The game is on and insects can be discovered in all areas surrounding the village. Wild grasses, fields, burrows, trees and riverbanks. No areas are out of bounds. Time to sample the fruits of their labours. The children prepare their snack by removing the less appetising parts, such as the wings, head and stomach contents. At this point, even some of the adults like to get involved. 
post-processing, the insects can now be grilled over hot charcoal or fried in shea butter and spices. Delicious! They can then be shared amongst the troops. Bon appétit! In their eyes, entomophagy is more an entertaining way to grab a snack than a practical method to address nutritional deficiencies. However, with school attendance increasing, this leaves less time for insect hunting and it's clear an alternative approach is required to keep insects on the menu. In contrast to other insects in the area, winged termites are held in high esteem. They're eaten by numerous ethnic groups and are thought to be nutritious and tasty. Termites are collected and processed systematically by adults before being sold in both rural and urban markets for food preparation and sauces. This example shows that edible insects can provide local benefits, but let's think about the bigger picture. Unfortunately, current manual collection will never be able to feed everyone as, naturally, most insects eaten are not available throughout the year. This begs the question, can edible insects really contribute to sustaining livelihoods and addressing food security in northern Benin? One possibility is to move away from just collecting and to start producing. This could allow villagers to make a living from the insects they produce, as is already done in Thailand where some 15,000 farmers rear insects as their primary source of income. A similar idea is being supported in neighbouring Laos by the FAO. Possibilities also exist beyond the small-scale, localised projects. In fact, some countries like Mexico, the processing of insects has developed into a big industry, with insects even packaged and sold for exports. So, why produce edible insects in Benin? Firstly, the insects are nutritionally very rich and are comparable to other meats. For example, they're high in protein and minerals such as iron and vitamin A which are common deficiencies affecting around half of the children in Africa. Furthermore, they have a low environmental impact, both in terms of land area used and lower greenhouse gas emissions. When compared to cows, they don't need a field to graze in and produce only a tenth of the methane. Insects are also a more efficient animal. For example, 10 kilograms of feed will get you 9 kilograms of locust, but only 1 kilogram of beef. Being cold-blooded, they can use much more of their food energy for growth. And finally, they have high reproduction rates, which facilitates mass production. Like all products, insects need to have a market, and for this, both supply and demand have to match up. But for the moment, problems remain on both sides. For supply, an extensive body of knowledge must be built concerning which species should be promoted and how they should be reared. This will require funding from both public and private domains for research and development. Following on from this, infrastructure for production, storage and supply must also be established, along with legislation to regulate the handling of insects. International collaboration could aid this process, but is by no means straightforward. Yeah, I think the technology is there. There, there are also other companies uh, working in the Netherlands. The only problem is that they are extremely protective. So I know one company in the Netherlands, uh, really very innovative guys. Uh, they have a company uh, on the black soldier fly and some other insects, but they hardly won't, they don't even talk to you because they are so afraid that some of their information will leak out so they are extremely protective mm. so you are not allowed to come into their rearing as well really. the companies are waiting now for the legislation mm. uh, so the legislation is the biggest <coughs> uh, to be taken mm. so uh, if there is no legislation uh, then companies are not going to invest in it and at the moment it's not possible to use insects even as animal feed and of course, market research aimed at understanding consumer preferences would be essential to develop appealing and innovative products, such as an insect flower that could be added to the maize-based porridge currently prescribed for malnourished children. However, for this to work, it's also vital that the products are affordable. In fact, with shifting cultural attitudes, not all consumers may be enthusiastic about eating insects in the traditional way. Translators who were talking to each other internationally and the Japanese, you know, they were just eating with their hands. And the Africans, you know, they 
we can't use our hands, you know, that because, you know, culturally you would eat with your hands, but, you know, they think, the Western people think you can't do it. They don't do it. Mm. So I would say, go ahead, you know, it's your culture, so be proud of your culture and do it. But that's a little bit, I think, the problem with Africa, that they have a kind of, I would say, minority complex. However, Dr. Bienvenu and Dr. Coyote, two scientists from the University of Obomikawavi in Benin's economic capital, Cotonou, are more hopeful. Les insectes peuvent apporter euh, au plan nutritionnel et quelle peut être leur contribution en termes de réduction de la malnutrition au niveau. Donc, il y a ça, il y a la prise de conscience, etc. Et cette prise de conscience peut avoir lieu. Donc, ces barrières, ce ne sont pas des barrières infranchissables, ce ne sont pas des barrières difficiles à mener. Voilà, éducation, formation, démonstration. Et, et, et valorisation pour que le produit soit acceptable. Voilà. In fact, demonstrations where the public are given the opportunity to sample edible insects have already taken place in Central Breen with very positive results. Although education and awareness campaigns are the foundation blocks for building a national appetite for bugs, integration into food policies at a government level would also boost their demand. Lessons can be learned from other countries that have already succeeded promoting insects at different scales. Edible insects are not yet in the list of products promoted by the National Food Security Plan. To make use of these potentially abundant resources in a time of need, there must be a stronger push towards putting insects on the menu. Hopefully, projects on entomophagy Benin can contribute to this. Currently, the Centre for Biodiversity Research, the CRGB, is compiling an inventory of insects consumed nationwide while the University of Abome Calavi is working to cultivate rhinoceros beetle larvae in Cotonou. The International Institute for Tropical Agriculture is also becoming attracted to the potential of insects, looking to develop rearing and distribution facilities in Benin, specifically targeting malnourished young children and pregnant women. Our study in Benin taught us that learning from traditional practices can help us determine how to move forward. With combined efforts from entomologists, nutritionists, Sociologists and economists, alongside a generous amount of funding and interest, entomophagy could prove a sustainable and coherent solution to food security issues. And if I see the enormous, let's say, international attention for this, and that people see that we have to change, let's say, our, our habits of uh, protein intake, then I think it certainly has a future. Perhaps, one day, Benin will join the other insect producing countries following the Southeast Asia example. Certainly, the potential is there. However, only a combination of awareness, research, funding, and national interest can make this prospect a reality. Yeah.